Welcome to Recurring Insight. It's the beginning of your upkeep, so it's time for another episode. I'm your host, Michael, and let's dive in. This week, we're taking a look at the best tutors in the format and what kind of decks they see play in. Before we begin, I have a short note about the methodology. I went through most of the decks on the database, noted which tutors make it into each deck, then determined what percentage of decks capable of running a tutor actually run it. Based on that, I sorted them into seven tiers. This means that there may be over or underrated tutors and tutors that support a more niche theme sorted into tiers that you don't necessarily agree with. However, tiers are solely dependent on how much play they see versus how many decks they could be run in. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at the cream of the crop. All of the iconic one mana tutors besides Worldly Tutor make it in. Gamble sees the least play as despite being the only tutor to hand, it's sorcery speed and you run the risk of discarding what you tutor for. It sees less play the more colors you run, which makes sense, as you have more options. It's mainly excluded from disruptive decks that lack significant graveyard synergy, like Curious Control and Kalamax. Demonic Tutor is self-explanatory, and although Imperial Seal is just a worse vampiric tutor, being sorcery speed doesn't stop it from being an auto-include. Limduel's Vault lets you stack the top 5 at instant speed, and avoids Opposition Agent. It's mainly cut from 4 and 5 color proactive decks that either aren't willing to pay 2 mana for a tutor to the top of their library, or aren't willing to pay the life due to their dependency on Ad Nauz. Tainted Pact, although boosted by being a combo piece with Thoracle and Lab Jace, sees play outside of decks with blue. Unlike Demonic Consultation, Pact is a low risk card, as you can choose to stop at any point. However, it doesn't see play in decks that use combos composed of many moving parts, like Marin who runs Protean Hulk lines, and Metapod, which runs Birthing Pod lines. Next, we've got Tier 2, composed of tutors that see play in 60-79% to of decks. Elodomery's Call was actually a surprise for me. It sees play in grindy, creature-based decks, and decks running creature-centric combos, like Nigella and Dawn Waker. Neoform is in a similar position. It needs to be able to find value or combo pieces, ideally both, but the CMC requirement complicates things. With dorks being one CMC, two CMC creatures are typically the easiest to find, notably Thoracle. This explains why most decks running blue, black, and green include Neoform. However, some of the most proactive and controlling decks rely less heavily on creatures than artifacts due to their explosive potential and in order to break parity on board wipes. This leads to Neoform being less consistent, and therefore not making the cut. Praetor's Grasp is mainly excluded from reanimation dependent decks. You can't put reanimation targets into the graveyard with it, and you're less likely to find Entomb or a reanimate spell than just a normal tutor. It also doesn't make it into some higher color decks, especially Dork Alliant decks, due to the double black cost requirement. Wishclaw Talisman is only worth it if you're finding a combo piece, as giving someone a tutor just to find an answer hurts a lot. This leads to it being used almost exclusively in proactive decks. Worldly Tutor is similar to Elodomri's Call, and sees play in similar decks. Tier 3 is where you start needing a reason to include them versus a reason to exclude them. For crop rotation, two of the best targets are both Seiju and Guy's Cradle, leading it to be at its best in Creature Reliant and Ad Nauz decks. Due to both Seiju providing colorless and Guy's Cradle only providing green, 4 and 5 color decks don't normally run it. Diabolic Intent rewards creature heavy decks, so it's great in dork heavy builds. However, this also extends to decks with cheap commanders and commanders that generate tokens. Demonic Consultation is only used as a tutor as a last resort. Unlike Tainted Pack, you don't have any control as a resolves, which leads to it only seeing play as part of the Forbidden Tutor combo. And Tomb sees play in decks that care about the graveyard. It's the best tutor to the graveyard, and is only this low on the list due to the relatively low number of decks that care about reanimation. Intuition is kind of interesting. It sees play in almost all mono blue decks, and then there's a sharp cutoff until it comes to Grixis and Jeskai decks, followed by Sans Green and Sans Black decks. This is explained by the lack of options for mono blue and the ability to form game winning packages in three or more colors. The most notable of these is the Breach package, consisting of Savine's Reclamation, Breach, and Lion's Eye Diamond. Evolution and Finale are run in similar decks, although Finale does see more play. They're best in dork heavy decks, especially Evolution. Although Finale can be used to find a dork, value engine, or serve as an outlet for infinite mana, with Eldritch Evolution, it's typically not worth using it unless you can hit a combo or a value piece consistently. 
It's also worth noting that it sees less play in blue decks, as they have access to Neil Forum. Spellseeker sees play in two types of decks. Decks that lack better options, especially decks that don't have access to black, and decks that care about creatures. Inala is the exception, but Spellseeker is a one card combo in Inala, so it's hard to argue with that. While it does also see play in some very proactive decks that want to increase tutor density, the cost, CMC restriction, and needing to reveal what you found really hurt it. Survival of the Fittest makes it into low color green decks and decks that care about putting creatures in the graveyard. Tier 4 is an awkward place, somewhere between mainstream and niche. The first four all find creatures. Court of Calling and Green Sun Zenith have a lot of overlap in low color green decks, but there are some subtle differences. Cord is better in decks that care about creatures, especially value creatures, in order to take advantage of the Convoke ability, while Zenith is cheaper, leading to it being played in more decks. However, in general, they're both outclassed by Finale, which leads to them ranking here. Imperial Recruiter and Ranger Captain of Eos serve very different purposes. Imperial Recruiter, a lot of the time, is just a 5 mana dock side. It mostly makes the cut in low color decks and higher color decks that have a specific synergy to either Dockside or another creature that fits the restrictions. Ranger Captain of Eos, on the other hand, is a silence effect that lets you find a 1 CMC creature. The activated ability is significantly better than the ETB and what gets it into lower color decks, especially Adnos decks and decks that care about creatures. Finally, we've got Merchant Scroll. It sees play in all mono blue decks, but after that there's a sharp decrease due to the restrictions. At two or more colors, it mostly gets into control decks to find an answer, or because it can find a combo piece, like a bounce spell for Vadrock or a reversal for Jeska Isai. It really only comes off the bench when you don't have access to better options. We've reached tier 5, which I would officially call niche. They're included because they support a specific game plan. Due to the number of them, I'm breaking them up into three sections. Captain Sisse makes it into Derevi, as Derevi can abuse untapped triggers. Buried Alive sees play in the most dedicated reanimation decks, like Marin and Nethroi, and decks that have specific piles they can win with. Grim Tutor doesn't require any specific synergies, but it's also 3 mana and sorcery speed. It's the kind of card you add after testing and deciding, yeah, I really needed another tutor. Mausoleum Secrets sees play in decks that expect to have creatures in the yard, like Yawgmoth and Kroxa. Raziketh is technically a tutor, but it's really a win condition that warps the deck around it. These see the most play in low color decks, and while there's a lot of overlap, there are some nuances to whether they make the cut. Going down the list, let's start with Fabricate. It's the most vanilla of all of them. You put an artifact into your hand. It fits most situations just fine. Goblin Engineer, as a tutor of the yard, requires another artifact on the field and requires you to untap. Due to this, it isn't typically used to find a combo piece, which really cuts into the usefulness of it. Its redeeming quality is serving as recursion as well. As a result of only tapping for colorless, Inventor's Fair doesn't see any play above two colors. Reshape requires you being incredibly dedicated to artifacts, as you need to give one up as an additional cost. Due to this and the other options available, if you're running this, you want to be running Cheerios, like an Urza or Joira. In general, Tezzeret is fantastic, as it puts any artifact CMC 4 or less onto the battlefield for 4 mana and can also serve as a value engine. The main reason to exclude it would be if the artifact you're trying to find is either cheap enough that other tutors are better, or expensive enough that Tezzeret can't find it the turn he comes down. Transmute Artifact is probably the most iconic artifact tutor. You do have to sacrifice an artifact, but it's also the cheapest tutor to the field. Trinket Mage is self-explanatory. Despite War of Invention's cost, it's instant speed and it has improvise. This lets you leverage stacks pieces to tutor on your opponent's end step. Onto the creature tutors, Birthing Pod makes it in for combo reasons, or if you have sacrifice or untap synergies. Fiend Artesian is expensive and needs to untap, so it's typically only found in creature based stack stacks. Goblin Recruiter is run for two main reasons. Dockside and Conspicuous Snoop. Natural Order is used in mono green decks and to grab Protean Hulk. Recruiter of the Guard makes it into low color white decks, although it does see play in Chulain and Vadrock. Like the previous two, you need to have a couple targets in mind before you include these. Summoner's Pact is in a similar position, however you need to pay on your next upkeep, so it's best if the green creature is part of a combo, like Teamer Sabretooth in Corvold or Wild Mongrel in Gitrog. Isan sees play mostly in stack stacks that draw the game out to take full advantage of building up burst counters. The tier 6 tutors aren't just niche, they're narrow enough to only fit into one or two decks. 
Goblin Matron finds Conspicuous Snoop, Dockside, and Kiki Jiki. You all know what Protean Hulk is for. Man, I really miss when Flash was legal. Shared Summon sees playing green decks that generate large amounts of mana and rely on creature-based combos. Wargate lets you find any permanent, but it is expensive and sorcery speed, so you'd only run this if you had plenty of value engines and have all your combos composed of permanents. Woodland Bellower needs a target. Due to the strict requirements, this only sees play in mono green decks and Vanifar. Doomsday is a one card win condition, but due to the high risk nature of the card and its grueling mana requirements, it's only run in one and two color decks. In almost every case, the commander can crack the pile. The only exception is Kurik, which has such great synergy with Doomsday that it's understandable. Extract sees play in food chain decks. That's it. With Personal Tutor, you need a specific target, like Polymorph or an extra turn spell. With Scheming Symmetry, you need a way to draw the card and win or prevent the other person from playing the card they tutored for. With the two mages, well, the CMC requirement dictates that you need a combo piece at that CMC in order to run it. The seventh and final section is not actually what I'm going to cover as they fit into so few decks. I am, however, going to point out Expedition Map. Because it's colorless, it can fit into any deck, so although it sees some play, it ranked lower than it should have. The same goes for Pyre of Heroes, which is a much worse birthing pod. The issue with the tutors in this tier is that although they do have potential in the right deck, there are either better options or they're just too narrow for mainstream use. This certainly isn't all of the tutors in the format, just most of them. Additionally, although I tried to categorize what decks they see playing, there were some exceptions. Also keep in mind that I didn't go over pseudo tutors, like cards with transmute, and spells let you see large amounts of cards. And there we go. I'll post the link to the list in the description for easy reference. Thanks so much for watching, I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm your host Michael, and I'll see you at the beginning of the next upkeep for another episode of Recurring Insight.